what you want to do is you want to make sort of a circular movement with your legs when you encourage a horse to go back. So this is how I like to encourage one to go back. See how I make sort of a circular movement? So you're coming down yeah, you're kind of coming down and then it feels like it's like it helps it helps him come up, okay? Right. Hey guys, I'm here in Pilot Point, Texas with Jonathan Gauthier of JG Reining Horses. And Jonathan is an NRHA professional and a phenomenal horseman who's been very successful not only in the reining pen, but selling, buying and selling some of the best horses in the industry. As most of you know, I mainly train ranch riding horses, and within that discipline, there are a lot of the foundational reining maneuvers that go into it. I'm a big believer in continued lessons as a trainer, uh, so I reached out to the best here, and Jonathan graciously uh, offered to give me some guidance on a few topics so I can continue to learn and grow and just improve my program overall. Today, I'm excited to be riding one of his horses, and we're going to be working on the stop a little bit. Another thing that we're going to be doing today is looking at this Rainer over here and kind of evaluating um, his potential as a ranch rider. There is that three-year-old ranch riding futurity coming up this year uh, in Tulsa. So there's been a lot of people looking for those prospects that will be good at that. And we're going to be looking at this horse today and just seeing if he has the potential to make it there. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is ask you about the kind of the cues that you use on this horse because every one of us rides a little bit differently and I want to be sure that I'm setting him up correctly. <laughs> So do this together in the best way possible and I can learn without messing him up. Yeah, no problem. I mean, <clears throat> so basically, the, I, I think earlier we were, when we were talking about ranch riding and talking about transitions, I think that in order to be able to do a good stop, you have to be able to do a good transition. It's all about, uh, it's all about your horse feeling your cue and reacting accordingly, okay? And so, <clears throat> um, a, a lot of the times, the cues coming from the rider are, you know, are not subtle enough. They're too loud. It's a little bit like we say, you cannot shout at your horse all the time and expect him to obey a whisper, right? So those cues has to be very, very minimal. And the way that I like to, the, the way that I like to see this in my mind, for example, is if you would, if I would film you right now, trotting in front of me, stopping and backing up, okay? But then we would play it in slow motion, okay? So, um, the first thing we would see you do with your body, like the first little movement, we would see it clearly because we're in slow motion, right? So this, we would stop it right there as soon as you start moving. And this is your cue. Okay. This is what I want the horse to just lock on the brakes off of, okay? And so if you too quickly push and open your legs wide, or for example, or a, 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 which, which tends to t tighten you up rather than just slightly applying pressure downwards in your stirrups, or you always pull in your horse's face. You know what I mean? Those are all of the things that totally uh, overshadow that, that subtle cue I just talked about, right? Okay, so it's very important to always cue your horse with that very subtle cue, which is slight pressure of the heels down, which will make you sit a little bit more in your pocket. So this to me is the original cue. And so you have to ask that and stay there until the horse has a chance to feel it before you react. Okay, if you always react with your hand or you always react with your leg, then eventually that's all they'll be waiting for. They're never gonna feel that. So, um, uh, so this is why that, let's say, I will practice very often just walking and then cue my horse with my heel and wait and then he should back up willingly. From here, I should be doing whatever and he should keep backing up because I have that pressure in, in my stirrup, my heels are down and I'm sitting deeper in my pocket. If he doesn't, I can tap him left and right with my legs, come back to my original cue position, okay? This is not something that I want my horses to be very fast or rush into, okay? I find it uh, uh, I find it difficult to really get a horse fine-tuned to the stop on how to use its body perfectly in a stop if the horse is rushing backwards all the time because then that means he scatters his body energy all over his body, okay? Rather than concentrating it in the body to really perfectly stop, okay? So basically what I'm after is that I want to feel that whenever I ask my horse to stop and back up, I want to feel that the hind legs are 
pulling as if I had a real wheel drive truck and backwards and I slam on the gas I want those hind wheels to be pulling the truck back same as I do want my horse to pull itself back with uh, you know with its hind down second I want my horse to elevate its shoulders so I don't want him dragging its feet okay so if I feel my horse is dragging its feet I'm going to remind him lift your shoulders and by tapping the belly here left and right until my horse understands that means move yourself back now doing this with a young horse that is pretty green you got to be careful at kicking them backwards uh you know so i introduce them to that with slight taps and even even down to the most broke horse what you want is you want to be able to to uh let's say after the stop you got your subtle cue saying you need to stop look how well he's backing up his back is round he's sitting on his hocks he's pulling himself backwards he's lifting his front legs and his neck is fully relaxed okay so that means he has his body energy concentrated in his hip in his hind end in his back and all of the parts that he needs to really stop okay so so a very very good backup is is number one priority okay uh, this is his, this horse's quality so this horse is a very big stopper because of that and this is his horse's uh, this is what I feel uh, this horse needs to improve is his back up okay so let's see how he does backing up and let's watch you just walk in parallel there so we can watch you and uh, and let's see how he does um, uh, how he reacts to your cue how you cue him and and how you encourage him to uh, to back up after you've asked him So when they come to a stop, do you give them a moment to pause and gather themselves before, before asking for that backup? So there, nothing happened. I feel that he's, I think that there's a little bit of a mix of him not feeling your cue, so be a little bit more, a little more pressure in your stirrup, yeah? And then if he doesn't go, then you gotta use your leg left and right, tap him backwards. I always say left and right because I find that whenever you, you, uh, uh, you kick one backwards with your legs and both at the same time, it has a way of tightening things up rather than, sense. you know, yes. than yes. giving the horse the motion you're Absolutely. after. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So I think that now, I think he, he's starting to know what you want. I think he's being a little bit lazy. So that was a great reaction to your cue. Okay. Now he's a bit lazy backing up. So I would probably lift my hands a little bit to say lift your shoulder and I would probably kick him just a little harder to say, hey put a little bit more effort into it. Well, after you've made him do it and you put your hand back down, you should keep your cue of him backing up and he should keep going so he doesn't depend on your hand, okay? This is That's a common correct. mistake okay. that I see is people pull their horse backwards, okay? And then once they get the reaction they want, they drop the hands Absolutely. and stop, but they have this habit of stopping. So therefore the horse depends on the hand so much, okay? It seems like this horse has got a pretty good reaction to your cue, okay. but he's lazy backing up. So I would probably just lift my hand and kick him a little bit harder and say, <laughs> move All right. okay. until you feel you have him. Oh. I, I think this is right. view, I think, very nice right there. I think I'm quitting. Whenever I put my hand down, everything stops. Like I get the move I need and then I put my hand back down and I let him have it. Instead of continuing to make him follow yeah. off of my seat cues. Yeah, and it's a good intention, okay? It's a good intention as a reward, but, uh, but if, if you, you don't want your horse to be, to, be, uh, to be cued to quit backing up when you put your hand down, right? Right, right. I'm glad you caught that. Try it again. Very good. Now the way that he's backing up is very, very good. Okay, he was using his back, lifting his leg, using his hawk to pull himself backwards, responding to your hand. I think it looks pretty good. I would like that you can speed him up whenever you say move. I would like for him to move a little bit more, but for now, this is definitely what you're after. <laughs> See that? See that reaction? That was very good reaction. Good deal. See, you lifted your hand, you said pick up your feet. He did, you rewarded him. So it's very important for me that even when I'm walking, loping or whatever, I like to, to ask my horse to stop and I'm always going to wait until I have that one, two step back by himself. If they don't, I'll make them and then I'll release until they keep going. 
okay? This is something that I want to, that I want very clearly programmed in their mind, okay? So every, every single time you come down to a stop, you get a couple steps backwards? I keep the position one or okay. two steps backwards. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so just to make sure that, that, that my horse always thinks that, that's always going to, that's what's going to add, uh, and that's what's going to make sure that your horse doesn't just lock all four to stop. That's going to make, that's why he's going to make sure that the last stop that you did, and whenever you watch that video back, and you will see it from the outside, when you asked him to stop, the hind then actually slid from the wall, you know, because he used that hind to stop, okay? So you have that programmed by having his backup willing and having him think backwards, okay? So if you haven't, uh, um, so th th this is why I make it a priority and that's really just to, to help the horse figure out how to use his body to stop, okay? So how early on do you start making them accountable to that and take two steps back every time you give them the cue? Do you start this early on uh, as a colt? This is very interesting and, uh, and no, I'm okay. gonna start it a little bit later on, okay? okay? Because the first thing that I learned about uh, about training the stop in a reining horse is that you cannot you cannot beat the natural desire to stop okay so what I instruct my assistants when they're breaking the colts or what I like to do with mine very early on is first of all I'm gonna always uh, I'm never gonna ask one of my colts in the in the first month or so of training I'm never gonna ask him to stop until I feel that they're thinking about it or wanting to Okay. okay? Yes. If I have one that's just like, ah, and wants to go all the time, I'm not going to say, well, we're asking to stop. I might roll them back in the fence. I'm going to do something to regain control and have them back come to me and listen to me. But if I feel that, that they're not thinking about it, then, uh, um, then I'm not going to ask. So what that does is that every time that they're thinking stop or thinking transition and I ask them, then they just do it. And it just builds that natural reaction to use their hind to just stop. Okay? And so... Uh, and I find that um, uh, very often I see this natural uh, reaction go away or disappear or not, or not be exploited by, uh, let's say, some, someone stopping a, a young horse uh, in a moment that it's not thinking about it. So then they don't react, so then they pull, so then the horse kind of fights a little bit. And all of a sudden you start, you start an apprehension to that woke you that that now requires all of that mechanical work in order to, 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 to man make that reaction right. that she could have gotten naturally if you would have developed it that way. Yes, yes, that's very interesting. I'm glad you pointed that out because that's a really, really interesting thing to think about and for me to look back and say, hey, am I making that mistake at certain points? Am I asking at the wrong times? Am I not waiting long enough? Um, most of the time, if, if, if most of the time, until your horse has that natural reaction and uh -huh. desire to stop off of your cue, I wouldn't back up after. Okay, okay. I would just stop and rest, stop and rest from the from very early on. Yep. And then go somewhere else and work your backup. Yep. And then when you have a very clear and effective backup, and it's 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 and it's a uh, you know and the horse you know it, it's a tool that you you know you can use. Then I would start applying it to training and developing the stop on the horse. But until that time, uh, until you have that, I would keep both of those separate. Okay, that's very good. That's very good answer. Very good to know. So another question that I have is, I see a lot of rainers working on their stops at high speeds, all the way down, running to the fence etc etc so I'm wondering what stage of training do you start working at the stop at higher speeds because I spend so much time hey buddy I spend so much time trying to get my horse to rate off my seat from from the jog and just get him to stop jog and to stop but I don't know if I don't spend enough time at higher speeds or if that would just make everything fall apart worse so I'm wondering how what's the best approach to this how do you school it do you spend a lot of time schooling a stop a, a stop from a trot or do you often work at a lope if I'm going to do the stop from the trot, it's going to be to work on my cue, on my reaction to the woe, okay? This is a good time to, 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 to practice that, okay? But when I'm loping or I'm going to start to add speed, um, how the horse approaches the stop is very important. So let's say I have got a, a young horse that, is, uh, that I've got a good backup, that's got a confident stop. When I'm loping around, I say, whoa, he puts his butt on the ground and he's ready to learn to do it in a straight line running down, okay? What I like to do a lot at first is I like to run down the other side of the pen and build gears to like third and fourth speed and fifth speed quite fast, but in the end, just relax myself and transition to a walk or transition to a trot, okay? So if at that moment, 
my horse really braces against me when I asked him to transition to a walk or a trot, then I can imagine that that's pretty much how my stop would have liked, would have looked like. Okay, so I'm going to repeat that, repeat that until I can run fast, relax myself, my horse just breaks to a walk, break to a trot, you know, without any worry. So then what you have is you have a horse uh, approaching the end in a position that is, that is, gonna, that is kind of ready to stop rather than ready to yeah. brace, you know what I mean? And so I set my horse up for success every time I say, whoa, if I'm running down there and, and I'm planning to stop, and I feel that my horse is not quite ready, he, he shifted his position, he's, he's bracy or whatever. If I feel it's not feeling 100%, then I prefer to just not stop, break down to a trot or walk, soften up my horse, go again. And then whenever you run down and you feel that horse connected to you, running like I'm ready to transition, yep. then you say, whoa, then they usually go, you know? Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. Okay, exactly. so that makes that's how I introduce right. them to right. speed. That's really a great concept and something that I'm gonna use on my horses down the road for sure is working on building the speed and then bring back down to that transition like you said instead of asking for a stop so i really like that that's a great tip i mean i think that you can go home and re-watch what i just explained about it a thousand times and you'll always learn from it and get something out of it but never as much as you trying it out yeah that's right that's right that's so right. i think that it's time for you to give it a shot okay all right so basically basically we're gonna just, uh, this is how I start, okay? So what we're gonna have you do is you're gonna go in rectangle. So pick up the right lead. You can go two-handed at first, no problem. And then do some rectangle on the right lead with no speed. Just get comfortable doing uh, large rectangles around the arena. So when I'm running down a horse to stop, your number one thing you're going to always want to think about is destination, okay? So always know where you're headed. When you do your turn down there, keep him looking inside a little bit more. Very good. Next time around, stop him in front of us. Just nice forward speed. Very good, get your two step back. If you're lazy, make him back up a little bit more. So in order for that stop to be good, what happened there is you kind of flat lined into the stop. You know what I mean? Yes. And so the stop, in order for a horse to stop really good, you have to say, whoa, while they are in impulsion, meaning when their hind end is on the ground so that the next stride, they can hit mm -hmm. the ground. Mm -hmm. So when you stop off timing is when their hind end is off the ground. Okay. Okay. Then they gonna have to kind of go straight in or yes. land and you know what I mean? Yep. So you want to make sure that you stop um, when their hind end is on the ground. But in order to make it, it, it it's, it's very difficult to try to time that thinking about it. It's something that you have to build naturally right and so in order to make sure and increase your chances the number one golden rule is always to make sure that whatever speed you're going make sure you go one mile an hour more just before you say whoa so a little encouragement with your seat and leg just before you said whoa is all he needed okay so I would take him around the pen one more time and then try it again Maybe turn a little bit sooner so you're not too close to the wall. Absolutely, I can do that.
Okay, now look where you're headed. This time, stop him again in front of us. Just like that. That feel better? Yes. Did you? <clears throat> so, something to keep in mind when stopping a horse: always make sure you go a little faster before you say "whoa," so that the horse don't just kind of flatline into it. This way, he got to channel that energy in the right parts of the body, set himself up for that stop. Okay. And so he rode that stop very nice all the way to the end. And towards the end, he was still sliding when you said, "Hey, let's go backwards." But. Was I too fast on a little bit, but it was a very good instinctive reaction because he was stopping really soft and nice, but he lacked a little bit of sharpness to it. So I think it was a very good instinctive reaction, okay. but she could have been very as well uh, been happy about, just, about what he did and just let him take that couple step back slowly. But no, I find that at the end he was raising his up his, his butt just a little bit and just kind of gliding into it, but no longer finishing it, really thinking back. So you said, hey, think back. And that was a very good way to maintain that reaction. Okay, but you approached it perfectly there and you timed it very well. And what you've done prior to set him up with working your cue, as well as whenever you turned the corner and you worked his pole until his body was lined up and he felt good. Whenever you pushed him there a little forward, he did it holding that position. You set him in when you did your rectangles. And so I think that this was uh, us right there. Excellent. I do want to ask, like, are my hands too fast? Is there anything you see me doing that might be a little bit too abrupt, a little too fast? Because often we can't see ourselves doing those things until someone else from the outside says, hey, you're sitting back too far. You're not, you're in, in the horse's way. You're picking up the reins too fast. I think uh, uh, I definitely don't see a lot of uh, a lot of wrong in what you do. I think that uh, 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 you know, and, and, and how you you do that. I found that at the beginning, and that is just definitely. Uh and I think that we're after the same thing and I think that there are many ways to roam okay but at first he wasn't quite feeling that cue okay and uh, and 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 you had your legs pretty close to him so I would I would probably just make sure that that your cue is a little bit more distinct and and whenever and whenever I I, I, I kick my horse back to say to move I would keep my heels sort of pressed down rather than twisting my legs up towards his belly. You do want him to pick his belly, but you d this is not a situation where you really want to pick his belly with your spurs. Y you want the horse to pick his belly up and his back by, um, you know, by the effort he puts in the, in the back up. And so what you want to avoid is also is a direct hit. Direct hit will tend to, to cause the horse to brace and drag its feet. But what you want to do is you want to make sort of a circular movement with your legs when you encourage a horse to go back. So this is how I like to encourage one to go back. See how I make sort of a circular movement? So you're coming down yeah, you're kind of coming down. And then it feels like it's like it helps, it helps him come up. Okay. Right, okay. And so, uh, so this, this would be a way to be slightly more effective um, whenever you're uh, you're, you're encouraging him to react better to your cue. That would be the only, the only thing I would. And always make sure that, that all of your focus is what is on what the feet are doing. And usually, if the feet are doing the right thing and are moving, the body has a way of sort of positioning or positioning itself in Absolutely. the right place on its own. And I find that we spend sometimes too much time uh, trying to, to, to correct a body position and not enough time on getting the horse to just move his feet. Absolutely. I think you're 100% right there. So I'm still having to, I know part of it's him trying to understand me and part of it's me, but I'm still having to think about this stuff a little bit too much, which means I need to go home and work on this. You know what they say, if you have to think about it, you're too late. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, but like I said also, this is a horse that needs to, uh, uh, that needs to get better at this um, and needs to be a little bit more responsive and a little bit more willing in his back up. But I, already, uh, I, I, I just like how clean he is right there, and I think you've got, him, you've got him where you want him. And if you always keep that sharp, you will always have this horse stop, continue to improve. There we go, good boy.
All right, guys, so there are some very interesting concepts and ideas that Jonathan gave me here. I'm excited to take these things home and practice them on my horses and refine them and get to the point where my horses are really that much more in tune with me. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, it was a lot of fun making it, a lot of fun learning here. Thank you so much, Jonathan, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.